Tuning into Black Sun Radio, you are live aboard the Miss Hunter. We are the G's with the expertise. I'm the insectoid droid, one of two points you probably should spend. To my right is my partner. The gang with a master plan. Together we are the bug-eyed guys. I've got all the eyes on us. Uh, we've got some amazing lists here, so why don't we just jump right in and, and crack them open. We've got some rebel love, and I'm actually really stoked to talk about both these lists. There are three ARC 170s on the table, or not seem to one, be on the table. Not one, not two, but three. Almost all of the ones that were sold in North America are on the table right now. So for those of us at home, what's a Tober Hef? Or a Heftober, if you uh, will. I think it was in a little movie called uh, Rogue One. You might have heard of it. Uh, it's apparently a ship that's shaped like a U. Its wings flap backwards and forwards. Um, hard to find. They're in high demand. <laughs> no, in all fairness, this is actually a really, really cool list that Thomas has brought to us. Um, it's coming to us, I believe, all the way from St. Catharines. Uh, so welcome. We're glad to have some people here. We've actually got a lot of out-of-towners in the, at, the, at the open today, and it's amazing to see that. Ryan's visiting us from Sudbury, so, I mean, great to show people outside our PTL extended family in the, uh, out there in the yeah. Outer Rim, the Sodom, uh, those guys. Um, but yeah, um, I'm going to jump into Thomas's list because I love it. So we're yeah. going to talk about, he's got Swiss Army Miranda, which is, I mean, love. Everyone yeah. loves Miranda. You can't go well. You know, it's an $80, $80 U-Wing, uh, sorry, uh, K-Wing on the secondary market here because of all how powerful the U-Wing, the, mm -hmm. the um, K-Wing is. Uh, so he's got the extra munitions, obviously. He's got the homing missile, seismic charge, and long-range scanners, which basically means Miranda can pick her target from range out and come in and, and, and just nuke something. Yep. Uh, and then he's rocking Braylon Strom, who I love. Uh, <clears throat> not often used. You don't see him that often. He's probably the least used arc pilot. But probably. he's got a really powerful ability. His ability is basically whenever somebody attacks a ship other than you, mm -hmm. if you're in that ship's arc, you can actually execute a free action. Uh, so here he's rocking the weapons engineer and M9G8, which again, I absolutely adore, which means he's probably going to offensively, or sorry, defensively target lock both of his ships. Um, the really powerful thing here is if somebody shoots at something that isn't Miranda, Braylon can actually assign a target lock for Miranda inside of her long range scanners, I believe, because it says that she can't take the target lock action, but he can to M9G8 and allow her some That's offensive right. rerolls as well. So it's pretty interesting Super what cool. you can do there. And then Heftober, uh, Heft. Heft's ability is actually also really, really cool. It's a lot of, uh, so Thomas has got a lot of action economy That's in a right, very yeah. unique way, in so much as that Heft's ability is that whenever he's bumping something, he gets to do free action. Whenever something bumps you. Whenever something bumps you, you get to execute a free action. Right. And again, Sabine and Chopper is awesome. That means if he has if he has done a red maneuver, which the U-Wing is the only ship in the game that can actually stop and turn around without mm -hmm. having to fly, um, he will be able to take a damage if he wants and drop a seismic uh, proximity mine or, or anything like that. And that's really cool. Again, it's, it's getting uh, getting Sabine, which is integral to any bomb list, but not putting it on your Miranda is really interesting because it allows Miranda to have, uh, actually in this situation, uh, more upgrades. And it's interesting to note that because Sabine isn't on Miranda, you want to kill Sabine. You, she causes all the extra damage, and now you're not shooting the scary regen ship. Absolutely, that has two five dice homing missile shots or uh, those seismic charges that can do two damage to around as well. So it's a very, very interesting list here. And why don't you talk, walk us through a little bit about Ryan B's list? Yeah, so on the other end of the table, we have Nora Jess Shara Bay. Mm -hmm. uh, two arcs again, and another T-70. Jess is making a little bit of an appearance here. Well, she's, she's just, she rocks, like straight out. Jess is amazing. For one more point over a baby blue, she is super good. And then you give her that M9G8 to help that, uh, um, that reroll ability. Yep. Uh, this is a list we saw recently in the System Open series as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it helped uh, win, I don't remember which one it was, but it definitely won one and it was a really cool. So. Yeah, absolutely. So super cool list. I also want to note that Tober can move, I uh, can stop on the spot and turn around. And if your opponent's ship just bumps into you, you get a free action and you get to drop a prox mine on them. Mm -hmm. Super cool idea. Uh, and it's pretty easy to bump with a big base ship. Absolutely. It fills a lot of space. The Ewing Zile is actually pretty, pretty good for what it can do. It's a pretty awesome ship. It's, it's, it's tough that it doesn't see more play in X-Wing because I, I think what it brings to the Rebel uh, faction is is quite unique and interesting with its with its combination of its crews and the crews it brought into the game. It's just where it does unfortunately struggle is the same place that B-Wing struggles is the is the evade situation. Now, with the wings forward, it does have that extra evade token. It does uh, have that dual-sided uh, card, mm -hmm. and that's something that we don't have to see. But the only problem with it is you do have to telegraph it because after you do a maneuver, you yes. can slip it around to open your wings for attack. You know, you open your s bolts for attack formation, and that allows you to get that extra attack die if you want. So it is an interesting and powerful ship. However, 
like a B-Wing or any other ship in this game that has one evade, it just melts under pressure. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, a big base ship is a lot easier to hit yeah. than a small base one. Absolutely. So it, it, it's, it's as easy to kill as a B-Wing, except for the fact that it's also even easier to target. And it loses that barrel roll. The barrel roll can be often very essential for making sure you get a shot or getting out of the way of something or for clogging things up. Absolutely. And uh, so Ryan's also got the uh, runaway freight train known as Nora Wexley. She's got PTL, Kyle, BB-8, and Alliance Overhaul, which <clears throat> everybody should know what PTL stands for. It's Pro Prototype Toronto League. Oh, no, sorry. It's uh, Push the Limit. So that's right. Um, Kyle Katarn is a really awesome, is a really, is a natural ship, a natural crew member to put on any ship that's going to stress itself. Yep. Because when you remove stress, uh, Kyle gives you that focus token, which is pretty awesome on a ship that is going to have Push the Limit. Um, BB-8 uh, is pretty great because it basically gives you vector thrusters without having to have vector thrusters. Again, with PTL, you're going to be doing greens. So when you do that, you will be able to essentially um, get that free barrel roll out of BB-8, off of which point you can then push, and then do the green to clear your stress, and then take your target lock. So it's pretty awesome. Yeah, keeping yourself a focus offensively and defensively, which is nice. Absolutely. It's three actions. It's so pretty key wrong. considering Nora almost always wants to spend her a focus and a target lock on her attack to give herself potential four damage, and then having that focus for your defense will help her longevity for sure. With uh, with Shara, she has Jan Ors on board, mm -hmm. so whenever you're assigned a focus, you can switch it to an evade. Mm -hmm. So you could actually give Nora a focus and an evade, and, and she could spend lock. her target lock defensively as well, which doesn't happen very often, but it makes her really hard to kill. Yeah, what you basically have is a one evade dice ship that can essentially tank two damage around, and you gotta do three to do one, and, and with the health that, uh, that um that an arc has, that's a very tough tough order. Yeah, absolutely. So they, they're survivable ships. They're not overly expensive for how survivable they are, which is nice. And Shara also has regen, which is always going to be a, a key rebel strategy. Mm -hmm. You can't go wrong with getting your health back. R2-D2, the, uh, that, that pesky little droid, he, he shows up in most most competitive X-Wing lists because, I mean, it's, it's just so powerful. Yeah, you can't go wrong. No. And the Ark actually has really good greens on it for its dial, for all yeah, things absolutely. considered, for what it does. It's it's almost as if they built it to, to be a PTL and R2 carrier. Yeah. It's also the first and only ship, I believe, that has the option of both a, well, in the Rebel side at least, that has a crew slot and a droid slot. That's right. And this is where you can get really interesting Rebel synergy or Rebel jank that you can get out of the ships that we're seeing. So these are both very cool lists, and uh, it's going to be really interesting to see them. And that's where you see the Stress Bot 2.0. Mm-hmm. With Tactician. And R3A2. Oh, Sometimes there's... even Gunner in R3A2. You on want to the... spend a little more points. Yeah. On the new Stress Baron? Yep. Braylon? That's right. Yeah. No, sorry, that's a... Uh... Did I screw that up? No, no, that's... no. I should know. I have him in my list. Braylon is the Braylon. Stress Baron. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, yeah. So I actually screwed up what Braylon's ability is earlier in the game. I confused him with um, PS5 one that no one uses. Yeah. Guy with no name. <laughs> He has a name. I feel, so <laughs> I feel so bad for him. No one uses him. So Braylon, obviously, uh, when he does a maneuver, is able to clear stress. It's funny because the the other one, the less used uh, arc pilot, isn't actually terrible. He's just super... The other ones are just so much better. Just They're so great. Like, how good are all three of these arc pilots on the table right now? That is true. They actually are at the top. And that's why you're seeing those ones in the competitive set setup. Braylon Jew generally is carrying the R3A2 stress lock because he. I tend to love him as my... Stress Hog 2.0. I know um, we keep breaking his name of a famous uh, Stress Hog uh, aficionado, uh, Mr. Paul Haver. Who's Lass. that? Yeah, exactly. He's a guy who's kind of okay at X-Wing. Oh, okay. Um, he's made a couple of cards. Oh. Yeah. I've made some homemade cards too. No, no, his actually <laughs> are in the game. You can buy them and use them because he's that good. Uh, I got the monograph at Nibu Open, which is really sweet. He's super That's nice. fancy. Oh, he's such a nice guy. But uh, he, he tends, tends to say, people have asked him on stream a couple of times, why don't you use Braylon? He's like, because the stress hog is just cheaper mm -hmm. and does the same thing he needs it to do. Yep. Uh, he'd rather free up that points to put more points on Miranda. No, that's the thing. Had Thomas had a stress hog in here, he would have freed himself up a couple of points, and that might have been able for him to put a 3PO on Miranda, because right now she has no crew. And mm. that's going to be an interesting situation. All right. So looking at this engagement here, what do you think is going to happen? You think we're just going to see a bunch of damage on uh, Hef? I think that's exactly what's going to happen. I think I think Ryan knows he's got a really ridiculously powerful Joust list, and there's absolutely no reason for him to shy away from doing that. That's what his list is built to do: point it at something and just freight train over it. And that's exactly what I think he wants. So here we're seeing the BB-8 interaction. He's going to push, and he's going to acquire most likely a focus token. And at which point he decides whether or not he wants to use Jan to switch that to an evade or not. Um, he might want to because, oh no, he's decided to keep it as a focus. 
And because it looks like that's going to be a bump, it's, he will clear the stress on this two bank, but he will not get to take a third action when he finishes his maneuver. Looks like he might be out of range anyways. That's a good point. That might be out of range of the of that, so it doesn't really need to worry about that target luck. Well, he did use Jan to get the evade token. Oh, so that means he didn't bump. No, oh, nice. So it looks like Miranda's just going to slow roll in and decide who it is she wants to take her, her take shot on. Has she already target She has yet to, Oh, she has target locked. Yeah, she has long range scanners. Yeah. She hasn't target locked yet, it looks like. And this might and be the turn for him to decide. To do it. Yep. Here it comes. So who do you think Thomas is going to gun after first? Do you go after the scary Nora or do you leave, go for that regen in Shara? Uh, I don't think you go after... Oh, okay, so he's decided to go after regening Shara. Shara is pretty integral to the Nora Shara combo. Mm -hmm. um, her both having the R two D two and the Jan that really allows her to um, feed Nora's power because Shara's ability is she lets she, friendly ships at range one and two of her I believe can share or use her target lock on their thing. That's so right. what that is, it ostensibly does is that allows Nora to use Shara's target lock to reroll her dice offensively then spend her target lock to add an additional evade, uh, an eyeball result, and then spend one of her two potential focuses for a hit. Shara can almost, um, uh, that makes Nora almost potentially able to net almost four damage every single time she fires. And that's huge. Ooh, there we go. So we see some two damage already coming out. Did, he, did we know who they pointed that uh, target at? Okay. Well, it would have to have been Shara. She's the highest pass skill and she's in range. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Spending target lock for three hits, I think. The, so that could be either the two ships, considering they're at range. Oh no, that actually no. has to be it has to be on Braylon because yeah. otherwise Hef would have had uh, three dice. Because his unless wings are so forward. Oh, unless he's not moving his wings. Unless he's, he's not moving the turtle off. off, off okay. Even, so. Okay. Yeah, he might not just be worrying about the interaction with the wings and just leaving them forward, and <laughs> just describing what his card is. That yeah, is. I usually play like that. Which wouldn't be a bad move either. Next turn you could turn around and just drop the bomb, and that's kind of right where they are. Oh, he, yeah, that'd be really cool. Would mean that they'd have to disengage with ships that can't shoot turrets? Or don't have turrets, sorry. And then um, you're in a weird position to be in. That's true. So one damage gets through there. <coughs> then again, does the U-Wing have a three bank? It does. He could just do a nice three bank with the U-Wing and drop that Proxmine right in the line of everybody. Mm, that's a good point as well. You don't necessarily need to turn around and have your bum face in, in that direction. No, because then if, the, if, cause if Ryan sees that coming and banks the other direction, I mean, the arcs do want to point forward because that's where their alliance overhaul gives them the extra die, and that's definitely what you want to see. And there's the M9G8 reroll, and that's two hits and a crit, it looks like. And that's two evades, and that's on Jess because we see a defensive reroll coming. And that's for Jess three. is always an interesting Yeah, spot. I don't think I go after Jess either. I think her power comes in the fact that she's there. But mm -hmm. then again, she is providing those uh, other offensive rerolls with the M9G8. That's true. And leaving her alone means she's very efficient defensively. That's absolutely true. That's what we're going to see right now. It's a tough call. It's, it's a good list. And looks like some focuses were spent for some evade results. Take, take Taking one more. We can also see a four straight off that U-Wing next turn. Four, four straight? Uh, I don't know, actually, off the top of my head. I haven't, it's a, a barrier to admit, I've only tried a U-Wing once. I think they, they do. I mean, I've got one. I should probably use it. Yeah, I've actually put one down on the table a couple of times. Um, Very similar loadout, just for for the lulls, as uh, as Thomas's loadout. I did try it with the jin Jan combo, and that was, in theory, really strong, but very difficult to pull off out of low Yeah, it was a little trickier than I thought it would be. Yeah. Putting bigs and trying to turn up your bigs a lot, putting, like, yeah. tack jammer. And yeah. It's a cool idea. It's just you have three or four different ships. They're all very different. They all have very different dials, and it's tricky to keep them together. Mm -hmm. All right. So, what do we think? What are our predictions for this turn? I, I feel like we're going to see the, I think the rebel gonna... special out of Ryan, the one forward. Yep. I think that's what I do. I think you're going to see the three bank happen from the U wing. I'd like to see him do that, but then it, it is going to actually kind of put his um, prox mine also in the way of his Braylon. Yeah, well, I mean, Braylon also can shoot... They can, Arcs can shoot out of the back, so he doesn't necessarily need to be pointing in that direction to shoot. That's true. So then do you think if he does the three bank, does he do a hard two with Braylon to kind of get his yeah. arc voicing? A hard two to ship left? I think you'd go hard two to ship right and yeah. barrel roll. Stay out of... To ship left. And stay out of... Just stay uh, out of the way. But his Braylon does not have... Oh, he's going to go that way. Interesting. Okay, cool. Yeah, three bank. Maybe he's going for the block. 
Yeah, that's the way I was saying. I was saying three. Bay. Oh, I, I, you're I thinking was, the other way. Yeah, I was thinking ship right and put it right in their path. Yeah, and literally go up the works. It's not like and none of them have, other than Nora with BB-8, none of them can really reposition. That's true. So now he's thinking about the prox mine. Yeah. Does the, does he think whether or not Jess is going to try to shoot past him or do the rebel special? He might actually pull off two blocks here though. Based on where he is, that's a, that's a smart that's play. That's true. If it just bumps, he gets the free prox mine. Absolutely. Or that's a free focus token, or a whatever else he wants. Ability. So um, I don't think we'll see the prox mine now because of the fact that that would actually be right in Braylon's way. He won't. He, he actually might even hit Braylon with it. It's the thing because clusters and clusters cover up so much width range, and you don't actually see the prox mine anymore. You don't see a whole lot of prox mine. The prox mine is still very good. It's cheap. Three points, three, three dice, points. Yeah. and with the Sabine on there, you're potentially four damage out of one of them. That's the almost the, what you get out of a cluster mine for one less point, and it has a very interesting footprint. It's very easy to hit things with it because it's so large. Absolutely. For those of us who aren't very good with bombs, like myself. I, I generally gravitate towards the prox mine. Prox mine is a very good bomb to start with if you're trying to learn how it works. It's a great option. So for yeah, the bump, yeah, Jess is going to get the bump. So we're going to see a prox mine hero or a focus for for Tover. Mm -hmm. I think they're all going to go two forward. So I think at this point, then you you don't need to worry about the focus because I don't think Brian's going to get a shot. Sorry, I don't think Tover's going to get a shot this turn. So the real question that we have to ask ourselves is. Which way is the title facing? Do we know we have that information? No, that would be good to know because I don't know if he's moved the wings or not. It did look like he had them folded because he did roll two evade dice. Uh, then again, he was only rolling... Free action. Yeah. What did he do for his last one? Uh, I'm guessing he took a focus. Uh, I don't or see maybe he forgot his trigger. Or maybe he's waiting for everybody to move before he's going to take two actions. I mean, technically that would be a missed trigger. Now, did... Ryan do this on purpose, I think. I don't think he saw the block coming. I think he was trying to move out of the way of any potential prox mines. Mm, maybe. If if Char if uh, if Nora is actually doing a, a one bank now as well, that'll be really interesting because it won't be. It's not green on the arc. The two banks are green on the arcs. That's right. So unless he's doing a two straight, we might see a two straight barrel roll from the BB-8, uh, or he's going to bump and Hex going to have a range one shot. Okay, so he did he did do a green maneuver. You are going to see the BB-8 interaction, for which he'll obviously push. I'm assuming he's going to push for a target lock. Nope, he's going to push for the focus. And then he's going to get the evade yep. from the green. And that, so that, oh, so I guess that was wrong. Then the one bank on the arc is green. And Ooh, that was a nice setup. So he's decided to go after the low-hanging fruit and just clear half off the board. Half's in a great position, though. I mean, he'll take a little bit of damage this turn, but next turn... Whatever he wants to hit with that mine, they're taking the mine. He's looking at potentially five damage out of that Nora, though. With the target lock focus and her ability and Shara's uh, M9G8 potential, like, there's a lot of locks yeah. in here. There's two sets of M9G8s. One of them is a weapons engineer, so there's locks everywhere. So hopefully the players are able to keep all that straight. Again, I hope Thomas remembers he is allowed to take two actions. Two additional actions on his Braylon. Yeah. I mean, I don't think the Ewing has that many actions. No, it doesn't. But the focus still could potentially be nice. He could decide to change where his uh, MNG target locks are. Yes. You'll be taking those shots with him regardless, but yeah, for sure. It's like we're seeing a two... Sh oh, not one straight. Fine cash. Interesting how Braylon hasn't moved yet. Or did I miss that? Have I been... Beautiful? Yeah, he went, I one missed it. he went the Rebel Special one all straight. Alright, alright, perfect. So Miranda is definitely going to get her munitions off if she chooses to. And yep. I think you're going to see a homing missile. Do you go after Shara? I thought so he's got the lock on, it looks like. Cool. That makes sense, especially next turn you can hit Shara with the prox mine if you want. Yeah, um, absolutely. He can... Cash one bank. Yeah, and then just drop it. He gets to choose what, who he who he hits with it. And that's, that's right. Absolutely, yeah. That's, that that could actually be debilitating. That's actually a really good setup he's got. So if, uh, if Thomas trades Tober for Shara... I would be fine with that. You'd be fine with that? You lose Sabine, though. That's true... That's true, but Miranda, the size, I feel like the Miranda seismics are there just because, and that's no a little crappy. Want, that's not a great roll. But he does have MNG8. Yeah. Oh, he's going to spend the focus token. And, okay, so. But he can't re roll the same die twice, obviously. So he takes only two damage. It's not enough. That's unfortunate. 
I'm sure he would have liked to have seen more damage coming out of it that way. Yeah, especially with the regen and stuff. Yeah, so Miranda would have burned one rough. shield to make that a five dice attack. On Thomas's thing. Yeah. yeah, Miranda would be down one shield to burn to be Ooh. able to fire that additional attack. That's that's some good dice. And that's out of Nora. So she'll. Does she add the focus result? Yes, he's going to. Yep, spin in the target lock. Yeah. Nope. Nope. Just doing the four. All right, just going for four. Well, I guess he figures. So the U wing is on the the turnaround side then. Okay. Yeah. Which makes sense. Yeah. So he's gonna. That was uh, for a major hull bleach, I think. Because he's rolled an additional card, he rolled additional damage. And unfortunately, oh. there he goes. So that's a rough one. That's a rough that's one. That's a poor start. And Sabine yeah. is down before a bomb gets dropped. That yeah. is not great. Yeah, lo uh, losing losing the U wing with the prox mine was was a bit rough. Yeah, had he got the prox mine off, would have been nice for sure. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's what makes Nora very scary in this list. Is she has so much. She hits very hard. She hits very hard. So now we're in a much different board state. With that Ewing gone, blocking mm -hmm. the field. The, the whole world is open in front of Ryan now at this point. If what? I was Ryan, yeah. I'd probably just go after Braylon. I have three ships. He'd be a very easy target. And then save Nora and save uh, Miranda for last. Yeah, I mean, once you commit to Miranda, you have to you have to really gut at her. She regens. She's a huge pain with the slam. Okay, so there'll be that damage. Mm -hmm. Two eyeballs. Oh, okay, so it looks like uh, Thomas shifted some target locks around to use his M9 G8 on defensive reroll. Yep. And the one of eight. And that's all Braylon, so it takes zero. So Braylon should still have a shot. Yeah, it looks like he's going to fire at Shara as well, because he's committed to Shara now that the regen's in there. And that's, uh, looks like two hits, I believe, or... Yep, looks like two crits. Yep, but he's gone for max damage. He's trying to put as much damage into the arc as possible, as fast as he can. Yep. three hits. That's a good call. I like that call. And so what you have to do. You just have to burn down one of these enemy ships as quick as humanly possible. And the, the only real way to burn down Rebel Regen is just to continually fire at it with at least two arcs. That's right. Because one arc on one arc, it's going to be able to regain one shield around unless you're doing at least two dam at least you're doing at least three damage. It's very hard for you to beat that race, especially when they have two other ships at their disposal to attack you with. So it is a good call that he fired the the, the missile. Okay, yeah, interesting. Who is that on? Sure, the tent. Oh, there was a crit that just came out now. Oh, Braylon. So Shara got a blinded pilot. So that's actually going to be uh, something that's going to help Thomas out next round. That's one less arc he's going to have to deal with. Yep. And. Um, also, the fact that he's also flying an arc states that he knows uh, where everybody's kind of going to be. Yep. So, he relatively knows where Shara is going to go to try to regen. And then there's the uh, Jess Pava reroll. She got one hit, it looks like. And that's one of eight. Okay. So, I mean, you know, there's there's still some potential here. Is if, if, um, if Thomas can get Shara off the board fast, preferably on the next turn... Which is going to be difficult. She has, what, five hull left and still is going to regen a shield, most likely? Yes. It's tough. I mean, arcs are, arcs are hardy. They're very they're, hardy. They're beefy, yeah. And, and that was a really unfortunate... I mean, the, the again, the, we talked about it earlier. You can just see the problem with the U-Wing. It's just such a big, slow, easy target to just burn down. I mean, his intentions were, were good. His positioning was good with it. The plan was good. It's just... I mean, Nora, Nora you just gotta is make a sure train. you get in there and either cause that, those nice blocks that they're not getting any action, mm -hmm. or you're bumping everyone so you're not taking any damage because just one or two ships, you're you're not an expensive ship. Well, you're, you, yeah, you can see you. He he did manage to block two ships that turn, mm -hmm. but he still just died on, only on one arc because the previous turn he ate three rounds of firing. Yeah, that PB8 is a very very cool upgrade. Mm -hmm. um, so where's Miranda going? Can she get the seismic off? Can he hurt two or three of them with it? Not with her seismic because seismic is a reveal bomb, so she'd have to drop it behind her, right about where the dial is, and mm -hmm. that would be that would be essentially be a waste of a of a bomb. I'll tell you exactly. I think what I would do if I was a Miranda hit them with Thomas. Um, he's probably gonna have to go. At least one forward with the rebel ships, potentially even two, maybe some K turns uh, with Jess. So I would probably see if I could slam out of harm's way here with Miranda, maybe do a three bank, three bank slam, because he's gonna have to refocus his efforts and um, 
to get another target lock because of long-range scanners. So he can't set up another missile run until he has a target lock now. But if you take too long, that means Shara will get all of her shields back. That's true. So maybe you just go one forward and just burn another shield and put four dice primary into her. You've got the M9, potential M9G8 reroll, which he's about to... Nope, sorry, that M9G8. Yeah, M9G8 is still on the field. Yep. And Braylon has locks on, it looks like, on Jess and on Nora at this point, which is interesting. So there's Jess going one forward as well. So you got to assume that means that Ryan's going to want to keep his arcs in probably relatively close to range one of her. Um, I'm assuming we're probably going to see, oh, there he is, he's going to boost to, to maybe get into uh, way, into... Uh, Miranda's way, maybe anticipating a slow roll from the Miranda from Thomas there, maybe yep. trying to block him. So then I think that we're going to see Shara do one bank regen and Nora yep. BB 8 to the probably barrel rolling to her ship right and then kind of one banking in to flank Braylon maybe. Yeah, the regen would be huge this turn, especially even if it's just a one straight, you get your shield back, you're also out of the way of Braylon, means Braylon's not really shooting anything effectively. Mm hmm. Hmm. Or one back into him. Maybe he did not see the maneuver choice coming from the other one. So that's going to be interesting. So he is going to regen the shield. And this is the only problem. The arc is a gorgeous model, but it's it's kind of wide. It's beefy. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit of a heavy model. And uh, trying to get it to fit in amongst other arcs is a little tricky. Especially when one of them, you know, you've got the K-wing wings out there. you got the arc wings out there. There's just, there's just wings everywhere. Ships that should be some sort of medium base. Yeah, it's like 99 cent wings at all you can eat wing buffet apparently. So there's wings everywhere you look. It's, it's not everyone's much favorite day. It is actually some buffalo wings, some spicy wings. So I'd say Braylon's probably buffalo because he's the stress and it's red and so on and so forth. I don't know. That's my guess. That my makes rationale. sense. Okay, so he's bb eating ship left, which is probably thinking then a three, a two straight or a one bank. One bank would be a bump. Two straight's also going to be a bump no matter what at this point. So yeah, Thomas is is putting his ships in good positions to kind of cause headaches. Um, Would you even mind just bumping this turn? Uh, I don't think you mind bumping this turn. I mean, you've got you kind of got the arc advantage where things are going. You got Kyle Katarn. You, you got do. some arcs on on Randa, which is what you want to see. Yeah, but the one yes, the, that's interesting. Um, no idea what's happening here. Okay, there we go. That looks more right. <laughs> yeah. We're flying casual, you know, we're not, we're not well. Victor's coming in to save the day and be like, hey guys, that's not how you do this. Victor knows what's up as he's one not... of the earlier doctors of the X-Wing game. He was playing from waves 1 through 7 or 8, I think. That's oh, true. He left us for the dark side in Armada. Traitor! <laughs> uh, but yeah, so basically, so Victor said the best thing to do is just line it up and just move it straight, which that's, does make the most that's sense. That's the easiest that way. Though the slippity sliding has kind of already happened. They've already gone down their uh, slip and slide path there so can't really get that back but that's okay the template mostly stayed in in, in place so yeah. when they reset it after the template it was still pretty close there we go where it started and i mean here you can see again shara with, with so nora with the bba interaction and the ptl doesn't really care all that much about bumping because she still gets two action when she bumps it's almost as if she's a scum player it's pretty crazy so there you go so good call on ryan to block the miranda um, now that was a two forward maneuver, I believe. Yep. So she could still two bank slam if she wanted to, but I think at this point now you just, I think you just you just take your Miranda shot. Do you two uh, turn and get out of the way, like uh, ship left? Uh, you'd still take a shot from from Nora though. So I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. You're gonna take the shot from Nora anyways, but where he is right now, you do. Uh, no, so he is electing to sit still. I think that makes the most sense. I mean, you're only getting shot by one ship. It's not a big deal, you regen and stuff. You're in a good position. That's true. But, I mean, she does not have the TLT, so the only way she's going to regen is by firing primaries. Ooh, that's right. So that's going to make it a little interesting. Feels like the TLT is so almost an auto-include. So, I don't even think about it. So it looks like Thomas has elected to regen yep. a shield. That makes more sense. fire the one die in the situation that he's in. And that, that does make sense because he is going to take two rounds of firing. So it makes sense for him to kind of get that shield back up before he basically eats it, which he's going to right now. Is it not worth uh, Thomas's time to try to continue to put the pressure on Shara? Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that's what he probably did, but he just rolled one less die because he checked for range and it wasn't a range one. So there you are. There you're seeing M9G8 defensive rerolling, forcing your opponent to reroll their dice. Now Brian has to decide: does he spend target lock to add two hits with the focus, or does he just spend his lock to reroll? That was a good call. Uh, I mean, it was the same same net result. Yep. Um, so what? What Ryan did there, for anybody wondering why target locks are not coming off the board, is he utilized 
his own M9G8 offensive re-roll to get that re-roll in. That's right. And only had to spend a focus while still keeping Shara's uh, evade. Or uh, try to lock for next round if she wanted to. Alright, come here. Looks like a little confusion. That's Braylon on Jess. Spending the lock, good call. And there you Three go. Hits. So that's the second time in a row Braylon spitting out through. Ooh, Ooh, no damage. Points. Sorry, no, no evade. So that's all shields down on Jess. That was huge. That was a good. If, uh, that was a good attack. Thomas can get one of these ships off the table at this point. If it's any of the ships, he can come back. He can do all right. Absolutely. I mean, the arc, again, the arcs are good ships. Um, yep. And um, so I do believe that Shara should have one additional shield though, because she would have regen last turn. Yes, she did agreement over. Um, and he did not get any damage to do with Jess. So now I think. Now I think. Do you do you drop your seismic? Well, this is the one yeah. thing that's really great about Seismix. He's going to get a chance to see where everybody goes yep. before he has to drop it. Um, if if Shara K turns, which is the most logical role, uh, thing for her to do, you definitely drop that Seismix, Jess. of course. Jess. Sorry, if Jess, if Jess K, tur if Tal K turns. If she Talon rolls, however, that's actually going to be potentially out of range of the Seismic. Especially if she moves forward, yeah. It's if probably she, a better if, option as well. I think if I'm, if, if I'm Ryan, I, I Talon roll to ship left. Uh, and then tuck it all the way forward. Then you're then you're pointing the direction that Miranda's naturally going to go. Mm -hmm. You're probably getting yourself out of range of that seismic. And you know what? If you don't, you still only take one damage because Sabine is gone. The one damage isn't as scary for sure. No, absolutely not. Especially if you can and if you can draw out the munitions and the bombs on the ships. That is, for all intents and purposes, you know, uh, Jess is actually just a support ship. So. I think that's the piece that he's most willing to lose. His synergy yeah. really comes from Nora and Shara flying hand in hand. 100%. I mean, Braylon's going to do a simple... I think he's going to move forward and just use a light overhaul to shoot up the rear. That would make sense as well, hoping he gets an eye and get some crits in yep. there. Um, and I think Miranda... I don't know. What do you do with Miranda? Do you slam her out, pull a target lock, or no? I think, as you said, you've got to keep the pressure on uh, uh, Shara now. You can't let her regen. I think the plan of attack for me would be try to get into that range one, hopefully out of arc. Mm -hmm. Drop your shield, hit her with the four dice. You have to put the pressure down. Once the three shields come back, she's basically as good as she was when the game started. That's true. That's exactly true. That it's only one damage. Now, I don't know if I like that three bank there from from uh, Braylon because in all intents and purposes, Braylon's ability allows him to tr potentially roll. I probably would have 4K'd. Yeah, the K-turn was probably a stronger maneuver. Because there's a good chance that you're able to roll that stress away with his ability and then still be able to take an action. For the stress, yeah, but I'm more concerned about where are you next turn? Are yes. they going to be out of combat? They're going to be on the other side of the table? That's exactly it, because now Braylon is out of combat, and now he has the hard two, hard two, and now That's he's right. out for two rounds. Or he K-turns if he has the room, but then he's still out of... He's out still of, out for two more rounds table, yeah, before exactly. he can catch back up again, so... So he comes to Talon roll. Yeah. Oh, not a talent roll. Interesting. So now I definitely drop. Yeah, now, now there's no, there's no thought. There's no reason not to, because now you're gonna hit them. Uh, unless he tries to boost, he might bank boost, which is actually I think what you might see. Wouldn't that be um, just a less effective talent roll? Uh, yeah. To be honest with you, at this point, the talent roll would have been a better option. At least your arc would have been pointing in the right direction. <laughs> But I guess this way you preserve not being stressed, but... Um, it gives you a of, little more distance, I think, as well. That's true. That's true, because now he's definitely safe from the seismic. But, I mean, I don't know. I think at this point, with uh, Miranda into shields as well, I think I, I would rather keep arcs on Miranda. Yes. Uh, and take the stress that's and right. potential one damage on Jess. I would have and, took the potential one damage to I kill mean, her. to be honest with you, I, I actually think the Talon roll would have cleared the bomb. It's close. So it close, and, yeah. and, and Ryan decided to do the safer thing. Which is almost always the better option. I think so as well. I've never been one of those players that's concerned with preserving MOV. I've always been, how do I secure my victory? Mm -hmm. How can I win this game? Because I could try to go for MOV and maybe have a better result at the end of the game, or I could lose. That's true. It's a possibility. It's a dice game. Things happen, right? That's true. It's, a, it's, a, it's an instinct that I have a hard time kind of uh, burning out of myself to just want to shoot. Yes. So what I'm hoping we're going to see from the Miranda here is the one bank. And then she'll be able to burn shields and be able to yep. basically put four dice into... Oh, but I think that's exactly what Ryan's hoping happens. I think you're going to see a two forward now with Nora. Yeah, two forward or one forward. Any of those positions would be very, very bad. A one forward would be actually potentially more preferable because then he's going to have a range one shot if he pushes for the target lock. Yes. 
Oh, it's a one oh. bank. Interesting. Interesting. Maybe he thought a hard two was coming? Yeah, maybe he expected the hard two. Maybe he thinks maybe that Miranda's going to go the opposite way. Maybe he's trying to cut off her slam options, and he's yeah. also trying to put his arc in the rear to cover that middle of the space. Basically, he actually is hedging his bets, and he really is cutting down a lot of Miranda's uh, potential uh, slam options. If you here. can take a second and look at the overlapping firing arcs of the arcs, they cover a lot of the table. But they really do. They're actually covering almost everywhere logically forward that Miranda could go, and, and, and it looks like that's going to be a nice block. Which is a nice... Oops. Oh, oh, that was unfortunate. We should really just start moving ships out of the way when we put down templates, but... Uh, fly cash, gents. Uh, she was a little straighter, guys. Yeah. A little more. Yeah. Uh, yeah, was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, ish, yeah. yeah. Ish. I mean, that happened. That's kind of irreversible now, so... We might have to do a judge call on this one, but... I feel she was yeah, a little I think straighter. Victor has called for judge. We'll see what the judge rules on this. So yeah, I mean, for this is a good chance to talk about uh, tips and tricks for new some new players out there, yeah. seasoned veterans. I mean, you're playing a game, it's hot, you're up under the lights, you're tired. It, it gets fudgy and fiddly at points when you start bumping and blocking. But really, it's sometimes it's best to just spend the extra 10, 15 seconds to use some range one templates and, and mark some ships and move them out of the way because then you're in a situation where where's your ship, where's my ship, and, and does that work, and when does that not work? And it's 100%. tough. And now in a situation where we can't go to an instant replay to see where exactly to set the ships back again, we're kind of going to have to just go by a, a sense. For sure. Always take that little bit of time. Yeah. Just be safe, be sure. You, don't, you never want it to get messed up. You don't want to win by... You also don't want to lose by doing that kind of situation. Or you don't want to lose cost by that yourself either, a yeah. bad situation by now. You don't know if, if you had a block and then you bump a ship and now you no longer have an sure. epic block as we just saw last game, how sure. important super epic blocks yeah. can be. So, you know, and again, it's tiring, it's exhausting. It's a fiddly little game with all these small little plastic bases and stuff like that. And, you know, maybe they can release a, a, a version that has magnets in the bases and magnetic uh, tabletops or, or stuff like that. But um, you do the best you can when you can, but you always kind of want to try to... Play a little more slow uh, when those situations come up and, and mark the corners and, and move stuff out of the way to yes. really make sure you get your stuff where it needs to be. Holograms, it's the future of X-Wing. One day. So here's the question. Are you going to burn your shield and take the four dice naked shot? I think you... I think you... Oh, I think in this situation... I don't know. Again, it's tough. You have no mods. You're rolling natural dice. And it looks you have like a re -roll he is from, not. from Jess. So what's happened is he's actually Roll just... some paint. He's elected to basically regen a regen, shield and roll yeah. one less attack die. It's probably the safer bet. But what that means now is unless Braylon can get at least a hit crit out of his uh, results now... Yep, Jess is just... Or sorry, uh, Shara's Shara just fine. Shar has gone back yep. to full... Basically back to full life and... And in all intents and purposes, this is a uphill battle for... I think I would have... Personally, I know it might not be the way options of viewers at home would do. I probably would take the four dice knowing I have the M9G8 reroll and just pray to the dice gods... I think you have to. You're in a situation Hail now Mary. where the thing about Rebel Region, and this is this is the Rebel Region trap that a lot of players don't think about. Once you've put at least two damage into a shields, you you've basically decided to. He got even further. He had hull. Yeah. At that point, you've got to continue to put damage. You have to put your entire list into killing that ship because if you don't, you've just basically lost the ship. You've got all your other ships out of position for what? You've got a full health ship That's for right. all intents and purposes. At this point, Shar is in two turns from now. Shar is going to be back down to one damage, and that's not going to reflect that the effort or the cost that Thomas paid to get her to that damage. So M9G8 though is putting in work uh, for Thomas here now. He's constantly spinning stuff around, and unfortunately, he's rolling into hits, which with a focus token is able to to give that back. So Thomas elected to shoot Nora. Is that right? Uh, no, Ryan. Oh, Nora shooting. No, Ryan shooting Braylon. Right. And with Alliance Overhaul, that's actually uh, hit crit because yep. uh, the Overhaul and the uh, Focus Token. So we got two damage going on Braylon here. Mm -hmm. Shrugs it off. It's not a big deal at this point. Thomas has to get a ship off the table. Do you just go for Jess next turn? Do the turn with uh, with Miranda? Get in there. I mean, again, like, the um, the three bank instead of the 4k puts him at a disadvantage for next round. Like, he's Braylon's out of the fight. Yes. So, he's... He's, uh... I, I, I mean, you need to put the damage into the regen ship. This and that's is... two more on uh, Braylon. 
This is a prime example of the power of TLT and how scary Miranda is with the TLT. Yeah, yeah, because then he would have been able to just... He probably would have taken Jess down this turn. She didn't have auto-flusters. Yeah, absolutely. Put the damage through, and you're for sure getting damage through next turn. Mm-hmm. So he is going to take the uh, Braylon, Braylon shot onto... Yep, that onto, makes sense. You got to keep the pressure on Shara. Have to take this shield off. Yeah, so does he spend target lock? He does. Ooh. Unfortunately, just the so one crit. The crit. He's praying now for the for that one damage to go through. Mm -hmm. Nope. Nope. Not enough. That's tough. So, yeah, so basically, Shara's going to get away. Yeah. She's going to creep forward, regen, and because Braylon, of where Braylon is, there's almost nothing he can do to get an arc on her next turn. Um, even if he, like, one banks to straighten up, he, his rear arc probably lose like i think right now at this point if i'm ryan i'm in a great position i've already got my m9 g8 out there i, I mean you want you'd like kyle to be able to trigger or jen sorry to trigger on nora but nora's untouched i think at this point you just bank it, to do a two bank with your shara and just start regen and then i bring think i would in. expect both of the arcs to do a two bank if you look at where their tails would be mm -hmm. it's an excellent kill box for where i would imagine miranda would be it's a good point yeah so there's a direct hit on, uh, on braylon Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, okay. So he's down okay. to four health. Ooh. Bartlett's probably doing the two turn, turning around, getting in there. Yeah, yeah, he is. He, he'll be basically bring his uh, his guns to bear potentially on Nora if she two banks her ship right. But um, yeah, I mean Jess Jess is almost guaranteed into the hard two to ship left. Mm -hmm. I mean, why wouldn't she? Now that she boosts in for a shot on Braylon, or she just sits pretty where she is. Maybe she boosts, take, try to get a pull arc on Miranda. Uh, I think, well, Miranda, we'll get to see where all the arcs are going, so she'll probably end up having to drop a seismic today. I think now might be the time to do it. Yeah, if there's going to be a two bank from Shara, you're probably going to get the hit. If Shara decides to two bank right towards right. the asteroid, but I think she's probably going to two bank left. You think so? I, I mean, I think, again, uh, an evade token on Nora would be great, but Nora is also sitting at full health right now. It's true. And with the BB-8 mechanic and the PTL, you'll still end up with a focus anyways. A focus target lock, and you could take a double focus anyways because of the Kyle Katarn interaction. So, it's so, it's I don't know. It's it's an interesting thing. I mean, Ryan is in a great position right now. Yeah, he's feeling okay. Mm -hmm. uh, to the point that I wonder if getting Shara hit with the seismic isn't the biggest of deals. I'd ra Do you want to put more arcs on Miranda to burn those shields off to kill her quicker? Well, then if that's what you want to do, you one straight uh, regen anyways, and then just eat the seismic anyways. It's free damage. Yeah. And then you get the rear arc. There's potential two crits coming out of the rear arcs with that uh, alliance overhaul. Like, I'd almost be tempted to put Mon and Shara in a position where she takes the seismic just to see if I can't get my opponent to waste his seismic. I see. On the ship that uh, one damage does nothing to you. You're going to lose the shield, life goes on, and then you're going to complete your maneuver and get that same shield back. Yeah. Well, you'll have, you'll, fine. you'll have lost the shield that you just earned that turn. That's right. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good play. Baited out, sort of. And this is preserving your MOV. It's keeping Jess alive. She's not the one getting hit by the seismic, which is what you want. Yeah, that's a good call. So Braylon is doing a two bank to the ship right, it looks like. Hard two ship right, okay. So they're trying to turn back around and burn down Jess, it looks like. Yep, you'll take your shots this turn on, uh, on Nora. So again, this is where I think, I mean, would love to have seen the... Ooh, that's nice. So he will be able to get target locks before he has to... That'll help him. Yeah, he's need, he needs all the help he can get now. He's going to give him M9 G8, G8 rerolls on both of the uh, target... Uh, both of the arcs there now. Yes. But, I mean, the five, the 4K might have been potentially better for him situationally because uh, last turn he would have been firing three dice instead of the two. And yes, yeah. he would not have had a target lock uh, action because well, we don't know. His role might have gone his way and he might have gotten yeah, the focus. Sure. But now he's flying directly into the combat and being he would have been able to pursue Nora right. or pursue Shara at this point, which is what he needs to do. He needs to harass Shara. So it's going to be interesting to see. You really need to think turns and turns ahead if you can yeah. to really understand where you're going to go with ships that aren't barrel rolling, they have no reposition. You're just setting that maneuver and that's where you're ending up. Yeah, because now everybody knows that uh, Braylon's doing a hard two next turn as well, because exactly. that's the only option available to him, which means uh, Ryan will be able to put his Jess directly in that path. So there's the hard two that way, okay. So uh, he's worried just... about the seismic then. 
He's electing to not regen. Or he wants to stay in the fight and doesn't care. Yeah, because then, then he gets the hard two next turn and bring all of his guns back around to chase Miranda. That's actually a good option too. He's setting up a massive wide kill box. So that means we'll probably see the hard two with uh, Nora as well then? Um, that is that is a great call. I mean, um, unless he decides to do something a bit funky with the two bank and the bear rolling with the BB-8s. But I think at this point the, two, the, the hard two makes the most sense. Oh, or he could just do a really another really good idea, which is the 4K. Have a ton of time to regen and, and not have to worry about it. Sorry, not regen, but he'll have tons of time to clear that stress. Yep. And he gets a forward arc on, on uh, Miranda. And if I'm not mistaken, he has locks on her from before, so that's actually a solid call. Assuming she hasn't moved too far out of range. Yes. So we're going to see the hard two on Miranda, do you think? Getting Going towards Jess? Um, nope. That's exactly what I thought he would probably end up doing. The three bank? He's, again, see, long range scanners are great until you're in combat. Yes. Uh, they're really only really effective at alpha striking something. Yeah, I like them with the one missile ships. Exactly, but we're in this situation where Miranda really needed to be able to target lock around a, a turn ago so she could have been able to get that second shot off. Like, right now she really needs to target lock something. Well, she can target lock anything in range three. That's true. It's a good point. Um, and it actually does look like... Uh, it does look like... Um, Ryan's Shara would be within uh, long range scanner range. Yep. So I'm actually curious as to why he didn't uh, target lock to try to get back on him on her with the hard two, but you know, he's going for that damage. Roll the extra dice. Hope, pray to the dice gods. No mods. Uh, he has a focus token, so he's actually going to regen so, instead. So regen. So he's playing the long game. He's playing the long game to see if he can out attrition the list. Uh, and nope, just no. Just gives zero. Mm -hmm cares about that and uh, Miranda's back up to full shields zero cares she gives zero cares that's that's the uh, great white north way of saying things gosh darn it gosh darn it she has zero cares for that situation we don't say uh, get good we say we suggest that you should get better at this game ooh that's double crits so M9 can't... G8 reroll there which is actually kind of an interesting interaction too M9 G8 forces you oh so yeah M9 G8 forces you to reroll a die, but you can't reroll a die that's already been rerolled. Yep. So Brian has to spend his target lock to only get one offensive reroll yes. now, which is what Thomas pointed out to him. And it goes his way for a hit crit. I believe that's on Miranda, who's unfortunately going to spend that focus. Yep, she's going to eat one. So the shield she got back is now gone. So she is currently right. She only has yes. one shield now. Yeah. Playing the slow game. Yeah. I don't know. What's, time, what's left with time in the round right now? Uh, so there is lots of time left, but the situation here right now is that the time is actually on Ryan's side. Yes. Miranda has no real way to... The only way she can regen is by continually rolling less attack dice, which is already low enough as is. Yeah, it doesn't really work out super well, because even if you kill Jess, Ryan is still in the lead. Yeah. I mean, the only good thing, again, so this is why the only good thing is... Um, Shara is probably not going to have to do the hard two to the left, which means she's not regening again. So that's two turns your opponent didn't reroll, but because Thomas wasn't able to have his ships in a situation to capitalize on that, that's two rounds where Ryan didn't regen, that he took no damage anyways, and at that point, yeah. that's as good as regening. That's I, right. Well, it's the next best thing. For sure. Because you didn't take fire on yep. a turn you didn't have to regen. That's two more rounds that you got away with not having to worry about. That's, it. that's thing, yeah. yeah, it's a huge thing, so. You get shot at, you're probably going to lose that shield anyways, unless yeah. you gave yourself position, position, positioning yeah. advantage. Using words, it's okay. Um, the real question is, can can Ryan kill Braylon before time comes up? Because if Ryan kills Braylon, I think we could safely say that he's probably gonna win. Uh, I think he. Well, he's already winning on points right now. He's winning on points right now for sure. But we're can, meaning can, that twenty five minutes. He's safe. You're worrying. So it looks like. Well, this is a good point because, what do you do with Jess? Do you? Because you guys have. Um, you both have an you, it's initiative, but it's a simultaneous fire. So That's right. it looks like Thomas has initiative, but Ryan and Thomas both have simultaneous fire with their PS3. So um, you could try going in and, and shot. Uh, Jess actually has three life left still because she has two hull. She has three sure. hull. Just three hull. Jess is sitting on three hull. Yes. yes. Oh, that's four. No, but, okay, so she he's not. I would go straight in with Jess and just but even so, just even mark if, him. Even because, if you trade your Jess for for Thomas's Braylon. 
I mean, Braylon's worth more points. It's in Ryan's favor. And the dice would have to go really in Thomas's favor for him to lose, to That's hit, true. for him to kill Jess this turn. With Integrated, she has four life still. Yes. And it means that Miranda's definitely not going to be able to kill either of those arcs. Yes. Without a TLT, unless you get some fantastic missile. That's five just... damage is still five damage. If he, if he, Even if everything goes her way, and it's going to take her two turns to set that up, because she has right. a long-range scanner target lock and a focus. That's why, I, I again, I think I would have liked to have seen a target lock last turn instead of yeah, the focus. Yeah, I would have taken the extra damage in hopes that you could get a nice missile. Because mm -hmm. now he could have hard two and he could have been shooting a missile directly at, 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 uh, at Charlotte. Yes. Or maybe he's just gonna one bank with his note with his um, Miranda and try to just make sure that Char right. that um, that Jess dies. That Jess is off the board. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, it's tough. We do our best to try to kind of guess what we're gonna see, but you, I mean, there's so many options. There's certain situations where there's only one option, which is what Braylon Hat did, and then there's situations where there's very many options. A ship like Miranda who can slam, who do a whole bunch of different things. You know, you never really know what the person's going to do and what's what's best. Sometimes you have to decide what you what you think is best in the situation when, when you're there, and you got to do the best thing for your character. For your it's tricky move. as well. We're on the fifth round of Swiss. You get tired. You've played a lot of X Wing already. You mm -hmm. know, best decisions aren't always made in the later rounds of Swiss. That's true. So that's going to be skirting the edge of that rock, but I think you should be okay. And hold your ship down. Hold your ship down. Okay. That's on the rock. Yep. 100%. So I always like to take note of when I... When I do like things like my uh, my K-turn. I like to take a little second and see where mm -hmm. I am. Mm -hmm. So I know if, oh, if I go two or three straight the next turn, am I going to hit this rock? Am I right. going to hit anything there? And that's things you're allowed to do. You can take a second to look at where you are and where your templates are and stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. And then information can be paramount in certain tight situations. You know? So you're saying before you move your ship, you look at where your template is and you can yeah, kind of absolutely. visualize. Gauge, gauge it. Take a second to go, yes, I know that my I won't hit this if I move through next turn. Mm -hmm. And then the next turn, you don't have to guess if you're going to hit it or not. So finally a seismic comes out. And that's going to be close. I don't think that's he's going to get That's going to get him. close. I don't think he gets him. Oh, turning away. Interesting. I'm not oh. sure... Not sure if that was the right call this turn. I feel like at this point you have to get in there. You have to do some damage. I was gonna say. I mean, yes, def Miranda needs to be defensive, but in the same respect, you're but you're about to lose Braylon. Yes. So, I mean, one ship against three, especially a ship that doesn't have TLT. Um, I don't know. It's an interesting choice. I mean, had Miranda gone hard to the other way, you could have felt pretty safe about killing Jess this turn. Hopefully, I mean, you hope so. Yeah, you get the Braylon, you get some rerolls. Uh, the I mean, simultaneous fire. Maybe and you stuff. take a, maybe you take a target lock, so you burn a shield for a four dice attack to yeah. make sure she's gone. That's right. I mean, if if, if that's because the, that, the thing is, if you PS kill Nora, sorry, if you were to PS kill Jess, which is possible. Oh, nice. So he does get it. Excellent. Got one damage going through. Mm -hmm. So it looked close, but that was a great call by Thomas. It's a nice nice choice to drop that bomb there. He also got the target locked down. Yeah, and it's also uh, good to point out that he also, that uh, Ryan did lose uh, a shield to that rock. Yes. So, you know, that's almost like Sabine is there in spirit. In spirit. She's with us still. That's Sabine's rock. That's what it is. Sabine's rock. That's Sabine's rock. Wave 12. Yeah, exactly. At the beginning of combat, I'll pick all rocks that do one damage to your opponent. Next and to Sabine's TIE Fighter Imperial. And it's, mi and it's minus four points because it's Sabine. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, I mean, so it is what it is now. So do you, do you bother regenning at this point with your Miranda? I don't know. He took the target lock on Nora, and I just, I'm not sure that was what you want to do. I feel like you pro if you wanted to go that way, okay, fine. You take the target lock on Jess. You have to put the damage on. You have to take one of these ships off. So I think now Ryan's, uh, sorry, so I think that what it sounds like what Thomas is going to try to do is he's going to hope, I think he's going to try to kill Nora, who's 37 points. And then hope that his, uh, what's his Nora, what's his um, Miranda worth? 38. 38. So if he can... He'd have to kill Jess and Nora, though, yes. in that amount of time to do that. Yes. So it's not going to be super easy to do. No. It just feels a little bit of a waste that you committed to Shara. But that's exactly what I was saying earlier on. And, and having fallen down the black hole of... Oh, having fallen down the black hole of re-rolling... Sorry, the the black hole of fighting rebel regen. I yes. I, I know that once you, you once commit, you commit, you commit, yeah, once you commit, you absolutely have to commit. There's no way you can let them get back into the game. It's a trap. Mm-hmm. Two dice. Mm-hmm. 
Now, in some, some circles of competitive X-Wings, people would call that die cocked, even though it's quite obviously flat. <laughs> but uh, out, out up here, we, we, we let flat dice stay as flat dice. Flat dice are flat dice. Yeah. I mean, I like to sometimes take a minute when my game starts to define what a cocked dice is, so there's not... You're not re-rolling dice that are advantageous for you and trying to... So the official ruling from FFG is any any uh, variance on the position of the die is considered cocked. That's right. So that's the official ruling, and there's no problem with that being the official mm -hmm. ruling. It's just, as you said, it's always great for you and your opponent to understand that that's the kind of game that you're going to play. Yes. I mean, nobody really wants to sit down to a table and get judge called before dials have even been set. And that which be happens. And that being the ruling is fine. Um, you know, it's, it's silly sometimes, because even if it has a slight cock to it, you know what the result was supposed to be. Agreed. You know, it's Agreed. a blank, it's a blank. Agreed. So, I mean, again, we don't want to say any one thing is going to go one way, but this is this is the definition of an uphill battle for Miranda. Yeah. That, that... She has three ships. Um, it looks like no and Shara was the one that was able to kill Braylon, which means he didn't even get a chance to return fire with Braylon on nope. Jess before he went down. Jess, at this point, could literally just decide, well, no, I, I think at this point you're in a great situation. Yeah, you do exactly this. You turn all guns on onto Miranda and you just you make it so that her regen is no longer going to be an option after this turn we're going to see a hard two or a two bank with the with the shara bank and we're probably going to see i hope we see some sort of bb8 trickery to barrel himself off the rock and do a one bank with uh nora does he need to can he just not do a hard two he can hard two yeah i mean but the thing is with the bb8 that gives him all the things all the things he can do the push focus target lock of aid yep um, whereas if he does the hard two, he's only getting the target lock. And of course, for a focus, which is still a good option. I mean, Miranda's not going to be in a great place this turn. She's really got to set up that shot with the missile. She has the target lock now. Honestly, at this point, uh, she has the hard two slam. Yeah, I think so. And I feel like if you were to hard two your Nora, I think you probably couldn't. Okay, so he's not going to get a missile off at any point. No. So he is going to try to do the BB-8. Here it comes. Yeah. So green maneuver. Is he doing a bank? Well, the only greens, the only things that are green, or, or is the only thing he's going to go straight? I think he's going to do one bank. So there's Kalkatarn. Just push for the focus. So sorry, he's doing it in the pro so he is doing it in the correct okay. order. Um, so we're going to get some value out of Sabine's uh, seismic charge this turn. Oh yeah, absolutely. You drop it, but there is no Sabine, but you 100% yeah. drop it. <laughs> I know. Sarcasm. Yeah. So what it is nice to people to say that um, I like the way Ryan is actually doing his Nora setup. You can see he's very clearly um, doing everything in the proper order. Yes. Again, at your table, you understand what people are feeling. Feel what your opponent feels. You can always ask them, you know, I'm doing it. Are you fine if I do it? Yep. But it's really classy of Ryan to do it the proper way so that everybody watching and everybody playing understands exactly what is happening. He is, you know, he's not giving himself that focus until he yes. clears the stress. It's uh, always nice to gauge your opponent's understanding of the game as well. Recently, coming from the Naboo Open, I played a little bit of uh, Heron Navigator, or mm -hmm. as we call her up here in the north, uh, the Holy Hera, praise be. Praise be. Um, and I would find sometimes I just flip my dial up and do whatever maneuver I was going to do. My opponent's like, wait, what would happen? Yeah. You know, because you can change basically your dial to whatever you want if you pick a green maneuver. And it's super, it's super important to have that sportsmanship so your, your opponent can at least understand what it mm -hmm. is you're doing, so they can at least... Because, uh, I mean, that information is supposed to be available to them anyway. That's right. You're not, like, really supposed to take that It only that takes a second to go, okay, I switch my one straight to a two bank, and the two bank navigates to a three bank, you know? And here's the situation where we would have loved to have still seen Sabine alive. Oh. Because then that's two damage on Because that would have been four damage in the past two turns. So the only one he doesn't get is it's Shara. Who at this point is probably not going to become his target priority anymore. She's I got think, yeah, I think at this point he said, that's it. I, that's it. I, I'm not hitting Shara. Yeah. She's back up to full health. So basically full health, I, I, I unfortunately Which, lost two ships being no, not enough damage to her. It's, it's just, can he kill, can he kill Nora and Jess just with this, uh, Miranda in the time he has less? So Jess and Nora are going to take one. Okay, good. So he is burning a shield because he does have a target yep. lock uh, from last round and a focus token. And he's going to get three damage out here. Nice. Um, now... Just took one. Just took one. Yeah, I did. I, I oh, did you? Okay. Yeah, so she's down to two now. Uh, just go. Okay. Cool. Um, right. So do you do you spend target lock focus to get an additional evade? Yeah, I think you should play it safer. You're so up in points that you just don't want to. You don't want to chance it. Yeah, I think I absolutely. That's the power of the Nora yep. Wexley build, right? You just take one on three. 
That's it. Miranda cost, that cost Thomas a shield. He did one damage. It's ostensibly like with that evade token, it's 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 actually it's essentially like she, he's running three PO. Yep. Which as any anybody who's played against a regening ship with three PO knows, you got to do three damage oh. to get one through, and that's awful. And I've seen it with three PO. It was rough. Where you roll the eyeball, get your one evade from three PO, spend your target lock, adding another eyeball, spend your focus. Yep. You have three, and then you spend your evade of four evades, and just, it's just impossible to do damage. That's absolutely true. And so that's uh, no, no, that so that's going to be sh almost shields down on Miranda, I think. Yes. Three. Yes. Yeah, so that's shields, shields down, down on Miranda. So so no more. No more. No, no from uh, she, she burned she, one. She on burned her one when she attacked. So you won't be able to push oh, extra damage through next turn. This is a. Oh. This is a rough turn. That's six damage in one turn. So. Yes. So that happened. So now you only have. What are you sitting on with Miranda? I have uh, two, two, two hull two. left. And it was sad, right? Thomas was starting to gain a little bit of advantage there. He's burning down Nora. She had four left. Yeah. Jess is down to two. You yeah. could easily have killed any of those ships next turn. Yeah. But now he's in a crazy position because those arcs can shoot again out of the front and the back, which means you can't easily slam out of the way in the time. Well, time isn't on your side either for slamming out of the way either. I think his only option is uh, three straight, three bank slam, uh, and then long range scanners as his advanced slam option. Both does he have? Does he not have advanced slam on his Miranda? No, he doesn't. Oh, oh yeah, that's rough. That's a very slim, skinny yeah, Miranda. Very... Tober ends up being a lot of points. That's true, and unfortunately, in this sort of situation, the Tober was a point sink that didn't do anything for him. Yeah, it's rough. It's a super cool list, but I think that's exactly why you don't see U-Wings uh, in competitive lists, because if he had had... I mean, for the price he put on to Hef, he could have had another warden. Yeah, and that's the truth. It's, it's your, I'm more worried about losing Sabine early. It's very easy to kill the U-Wing as much as it can do some damage. Put her on cool Ahsoka. Things. Put her on Ahsoka. Put her on something that keeps her alive. Imagine the difference in the game state right now if, if Sabine was on the table. But in the same respect... That's a cool list. 100%. Like and that's an awesome thing that he did. Like he brought, a, he yeah. brought a really unique list that's something you've never seen before. He's trying something super cool, yeah. and that's, and what that's awesome. About. That's what you want to see. That's what the PTL is about. Try some new things. Have some fun. Yeah. Well, that's the P in PTL, the prototype. The whole idea behind the prototype is you try a list that you've never really, that you don't know is, is tight. We put the P in fun? Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it. <laughs> I love it. With the PH, like the kids say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, the turn. I was almost expecting the K turn. I mean, you think he could have just been fine with just doing a one straight? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, I mean, you know what? I'm, I'm down with you. At that point, I do just K turn. That's, yeah. I just get my arc pointed around and gotta love those with that wing love. Wing on wing. Ooh, there you go. Miranda decided to Tokyo Drift. Just lighting these guys up. Feels like Jess is kind of the champion of this game. She's the MVP. I mean, she kind of almost always is, right? <laughs> She did so much work. She put in mad work. She drew She drew aggro. She put out mad damage. Uh, I mean, Je Jess at 28 points with the M9G8 or even just at 20, 27, I think, with R3A2? She's right? 28. She'd be 28 with R3A2, though? Oh, with R3A2, yeah. She's 25 she's 27 points. 26 points. 26 points. So, oh, so then, then R3A2 is two points as well. That's right. She's 27 yeah. points with R3A2. Okay. She's 28 with M9G8. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Either way, she's she's valued. She's a very efficient I, little stress hog as well. Even if you put her up to 30 points, she's worth every point. Yep, I, I agree with that entirely. Totally. She's a phenomenal tool in the Rebel Toolbox. You know, Rebels always needed a third ship that was cheap and mm -hmm. effective. Because I always find like, oh, this ship ends up being a lot of points in this ship, and I have these weird number of points. It's also really awesome to see a ship in a Rebel build that isn't Biggs. Not that I'm anti-Biggs. I mean, Biggs has been such a dominant force in, in the Rebel list building for so long and I mean why not he's phenomenal and yeah. everything that comes into the game just makes him stronger and stronger and stronger but it's it's really interesting to see alternative builds where you get to see some more interesting stuff coming out there and you know what when when the arcs first came out in the wave and I was tinkering with them I, I didn't really think they were all that great but it's really awesome to see all these competitive players yeah. out there all the opens and all the other tournaments coming up with some really solid and phenomenal arc builds yes. unlocking the power of the arc lots of cool combinations you can do with them I've seen uh I've seen a few arc builds where both Nora and Shara regen. Oh, it was so R5P9. You're, so and, you're using uh, Kyle Katarn to get that extra focus that yeah. you use to regen on Nora. Yeah, that's a really and cool option. Wow, it's just... You don't want to deal with these meaty ships regening. It's such a pain. And the double arcs, like the front and rear arc, and the fact that they've got yeah. a really... They've, they've got a really good dial, in all yep. things considering. It's a really cool ship. I think 
that was that was one of those waves that was just very very good checking arc here making yes. sure we're in looks like we're just out I think we're out I, I would call that an out I mean yeah I agree a lot of people do like using the laser I think for myself I almost always enjoy using the ruler and I think the ruler is a little more accurate because, I find it very shaky yeah because your hand the, the, the laser if you lift your hand a little bit you're basically uh, what I would let this, okay there you go I was going to say, what I would like for them to do is to remove Shara so we can get a proper lining, and that's exactly what they did. And now if they would each hold down a, a, a base, that would be ideal. Here comes the fingers. Yep. Oh, and here's Papa, Pal here's Papa Palpatine to come in to make the proper ruling. And, and you can see automatically he asks for a range template because that is a superior way of measuring. Um, lots of, there are lots of chiefs. And there's only one Indian, me. Um, <laughs> so I'm just saying we've got a lot of cooks in that kitchen there so hopefully they don't spoil the broth I, I don't even know where these are coming from we're just saying things at this point, guys. Just I'm saying, sorry just saying <laughs> don't hold it against the stream don't hold it against the stream we're getting a little wild here on Black Sun Radio but uh, at the end of the day we was ruled as being out of arc I believe all puns intended yeah yeah, it's, it's one of those things. How many? We actually haven't made any arc jokes with like talking about arcs with the arcs on the arcs. We're better than that, are we? <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> we're scum <laughs> and villainy. <laughs> we're three points. Then why wouldn't you take us? We're two points. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot how cheap I was. <laughs> I forgot how effective I should say. <laughs> we're two points. Effective is the is the PC word for broken, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 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 oh. We're value for sure. We are definitely value. We, had, we are value yeah. add prop, uh, When we were spoiled, I was just like, how did this happen? <laughs> <laughs> Who thought because, this was okay? Because we got no love in the original trilogy. You never saw us in the movies. It's all Boba Fett this and Boba Fett that. That dude lost to a blind man. <laughs> Not that anything <laughs> wrong with that. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's that it was a mistake that that happened. I still remember that Wilhelm scream. <laughs> 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 he got eaten by a giant sandworm. It wasn't a worm originally. It was just... Okay, don't go eat you me. Don't go EU on me here. No, that was it was in the original. It was That's just true, mouth. They added the little worm thing later on. I remember. I'm old enough to remember. And if we're saying that the worm thing is okay, then Dash is allowed to be in the old school tournaments. You're never going to be able to get Dash in an original trilogy tournament. It's never going to happen. For those of you at home, in the Blu-ray edition, they do have a YT2400 coming out of Moss Eisley. Uh, it's well, crucial to know that. Joking about the OT tournament, we have a, we had a format we tried the other day a couple weeks ago, which was super successful. Was super awesome. Uh, we did an original trilogy only tournament, so it was basically a game night kit instead of it just being a traditional game night kit. We 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 said you could only use ships that appeared in the original series trilogy movie, so um, only Empire and Rebels because there were no scum ships in right. the in the original trilogy ships. So there's also no TLTs and no Palpatine. So the Rebels were allowed to use the Falcon, yep. the Y-Wing, the B-Wing, the A-Wing. Yeah. I mean, they got almost entirety of their ships because we got to see a lot of variety of the uh, right. of the ships in there. Imperials, however, were limited to just Interceptors, Bombers, uh, Tide and Vance. Tide Vance, and Tide Fighters. That's right. We a, saw a lot of A-Wings. It was shuttles. a lot of A-Wings. It was cool. To yes, Lambda Shuttles. The Lambda Shuttle. And it there was, was, of course, a scum ship in the original trilogy. The, the, the Slave 1 does count as a scum ship, but except for the fact them. that... So you could only feel the... You could feel the Slave 1, the... The, the Rebel, the sorry, the Imperial version of yeah, Boba Fett, that's which right. did come yeah. out first. Yeah. That's right. Because he was contracted to the Empire at that point. And uh, you only could have Rebel lists versus Imperial lists, so whoever had the bigger initiative bid between their two lists got to pick if they were going to be Rebels or Imperials. So and every, yes, every fight was very thematic. Was if you're interested cool. in it at all, there's a write-up on Docking Bay 416. You guys can right. read up about it, and if you're interested in trying it out, the, the format is available on that, and you guys should... By all means, yeah, take absolutely. it and run a tournament at your at your local store. If you're getting a little, if you're getting a little meta meta out, uh, it, it's a great thing to throw into your repertoire every once in a while because it just kind of reinvigorates yourself. Yeah, you absolutely. See, you see a bunch of Tie Fighters flying against A Wings. You're like, oh, this is why I fell in love with this property. I was I, one of my lists involved uh, Ten Nub with Mangler Cannon and Vi PS Ten Ten Nub, and uh, played against uh, a Vader Sunter Jax. That's amazing. And that was pretty fun for me when I just like point my. 10 nub and I'm like that guy takes damage mm -hmm. that was cool so I mean we're, we're kind of stepping away from the game for a second here and I don't want to take anything away from the two players that are playing mm -hmm. but in this situation only one homing missile left is there anything that, that Thomas can really do he's got to hope to slam out of the way I was hoping for a two turn slam here oh two turn two turn and then coming from behind then but, then he's, from behind. but then he's pointing at all the rear arcs of the arcs I feel like at this point you don't have a whole lot of options you have very little health left if you're slamming you're not going to be able to regen 
Just go for the Hail Mary, hope for the best. Or are you trying to preserve your points? Or you know what? Yeah, that's true. I mean, I, th I feel like I feel like it would be great if you could potentially regen uh, uh, defensively so that you could at least line up a five dice homing missile yeah. shot. But because Nora's this... rocking five health left right now, so it could happen. But he's just not in a situation to be able to, to, to get that. And and Ryan's doing a good job of cutting him off. I mean, you're going to see hard two le ship yep. lefts from his entire lots and lots of pressure from Ryan. And all Thomas can do is probably two or three bank right and slam around those asteroids and just run. Yeah, I mean, or you can try to turn around again. This could be another turn where you might be able to squeeze the hard two, hard two. Maybe. That's a giant U, though. It is. And then he's he, then he's facing Ryan's entire list about the ability to attack. Yeah. That's, I mean, a, that's essentially presenting yourself for execution. Right? Because hard two, ship left, hard two, ship left. He's, fo he's, he's, basically, he's basically doing like a two-barrel. Right. But at the same time, the regening doesn't mean you're going to win either, right? You're throwing one dice. Oh, no, absolutely. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's, it's absolutely uphill. I, I'm not sure what Thomas can do to pull it out here. He's trying, Ryan's trying to visualize arcs now. He's trying to see if there's a way he can make this work. Thinking about boosting. Uh, bank boost. Yeah, so that makes sense. That's right. Yeah. Potentially making pew pew noises. Yeah. Pew 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 pew. I think he wanted to see where the boost would set him up for his hard two next turn. Yes. And that's actually a really great position. He's cutting off the right board edge if, uh, if, if Thomas decides to go Miranda ship right. Uh, and now he's going to cover both bases. And that's, that's the smartest way. That was a really good play from yeah. Ryan. Yeah. Cover both your bases. If you shoot, you're probably gonna put damage through. Absolutely, That's she is gonna want. she's gonna be rolling one die. And I mean, in all fairness, here, if this works out, he might be able to finish it just with Shara. Yep, absolutely. So, which way do you think we're we're gonna see Miranda go? Is she gonna do the two bank to ship right? Uh, I, I feel Slam like I there. feel like a three bank ship right would have was what I would have programmed in. Okay. Um, I mean, obviously you can't three bank again, and you'd be off the board, but two bank is good too. It's just, I think he needs the speed. Yeah. Okay, so he called bank, it. Yeah. I mean, it's just the logical lane. No, he can three bank slam. That makes sense. He's got lots of space. Sorry. Sometimes a little bit of the top board is a little you, cut off, so you can't see it. I think you three bank slam. If you three bank slam, does that mean that you're going to give Jess a shot on you? Uh, if, no, it'll be at range. Out of range. Yeah, it'll be out of range. I think. Do you three bank the opposite way towards mm -hmm. table, uh, towards Brandon's left? You could... But that gives you blocking yourself in a corner. That gives you nothing. Yeah, you don't want to oh. put yourself into a corner. Oh, he's, so gonna he's go for, going for the shot. I think he's going for target lock, okay. which is actually a smart. No, it's not a smart choice because no. it's one of those things where if he was in range, he gets the lock. If he's in range two, then he knows that he can slam out of range. Yeah. So it was a, it was a right call. So he is regenning. Oh, I see what he's going to do here. I think he's setting up a kill shot on Jess next turn um, with a target lock. Because now he'll be able to focus next turn with a hard two and nuke her with a homing missile. Because he's going to have the shield back. So he lived that long. Yeah, he did just regen a shield yep. on that attack. So Miranda does have one shield left. So she has three hull. And that's three damage. He needs oh, these yeah. green dice to cooperate here. Spend that target lock and reroll for an eyeball. Oh, oh that's, okay. what, that's what he needs. He needs to see two evades here. Yeah. Desperately. Nothing. Not what so you want. So she's down to one. Down to one. Which means... She cannot shoot a five dice homing missile. Actually, superhero Jess could steal the deal right now, though. Yeah. Would you have shot the five dice though, knowing that Jess only has two hull left? Would you mean would I have shot the five dice? It's like assuming next turn we get around. So hundred like, percent, I would have. Yeah. I think that's what he was trying sure. to set up with the regen. If he had, if he had escaped with his shield, I mean, at this point, you want points. For you sure. You want to kill something. Maybe even, but had you not taken all that damage. Yeah. Okay. Man is on the one hole. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. That looks yeah, the stun pilot, so yeah. she can't overlap anything, which she won't anyways. So Jess is gonna do probably just a, a simple one bank or a two bank. Yeah, just do a cash one bank. You're not gonna hit the rock. It's where you want to be. Or you know what? If Ryan, if Ryan really wants to go, if Ryan really wants to kind of uh, basically preserve MOV, I think he fits the hard two left. And doesn't I don't think he rocks her that way. I think I he's think okay. He doesn't just try to kill Miranda. This is gonna be the last round. No, nah, what I do is seconds, I yeah. do two bank one one bank boost and go for the kill. The one he's already in a, yeah. No, you're already in a strong pace. So yeah, that's it. Get into a range one, a range one T seventy. Hundred dollars always feel good. Yeah, and then you'll you'll probably see yeah you'll see. Uh, oh, okay, so yeah. he's just doing the that's one bank. bank, one bank, and then maybe a one bank boost to give himself a beautiful arc. Take a focus, be safe. 
focus is never a wrong option. But I mean, if if he does the hard two two slam, then you don't get a shot. I think if you boost it, he does the hard two two slam. He's gone regardless. So he is going for the boost. Yeah. I think he still gets him with a hard two two slam. Yeah. Oh well. It might close. be worth it's it. Might close. be worth Thomas' time just to take that range one shot. Just take the three dice. See yeah. if you can't make magic happen, right? It's There's true. no defensive modifications. That's definitely true. Grab yourself 28 points. You won't feel as bad if your Miranda dies. That's true. I don't think you can get out of there unless unless Thomas went for the hard two ship left. Which is a viable option here. Just keep her alive. Uh, which is what Ryan has decided to cover. Uh, looks Playing like he... very smart with switching his ships in different angles to try to Try to cover all the arcs. I mean, pun intended. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what he is doing. He is def Ryan is definitely playing this game. He's playing solid. He's playing to win. He's covering every single angle, every single exit vector for Ryan to take. Um, I just think, okay, I like that. So, do you think do you, you're saying now? Do you are you saying you with the target lock? Do you regen and pray of the dice gods no. that you can take, or do you, I think if you, I was if I, I was Thomas, I would just take that range one three dice, try to kill. Try to kill Jess. Because homing missiles points. are range 2-3 only. That's right. But your primary is 3 dice, and so she's on 2 hall with no defensive modifications. Yep. I think she's out of range 1. Yep. So just just make it happen, you know? If you can kill her, you're not going to feel as bad. At least you got something. There you go. That's two hits and a crit. Uh, now, there is a target lock on her, I believe, from M9GA. No, yep. there is not. Because that target lock is on Shara still. That's right. So that's two hits and a crit, it looks like. Or is that one hit and two crits? I think it's one hit and two crits. Nice. That was some... That's what you want to see. Yeah. I mean, he finally sees something coming out of his dice. Well, I mean, he's finally rolled dice. So he needs all blanks. Oh. And that's it's all one. blanks or one of eight? Uh, it's one of eight. So he'd love to see double directs, which is still not going to be enough to kill her because she has integrated, I think. Or yep. no. She has two hull left, right? There's two hull and it's sitting on three. So we're looking at the old deck. Is that the old deck? I think so. Okay, we got double damage, so we're probably going to see the integrated go away. Yep. Ejecting M9G8, yep. I would assume. There it goes. Yeah. And, and double damage again. Could that have happened? No, it wasn't enough text on there for it to be direct hit. Right. Oh, Jess is still alive. Whatever the crit was at this point, it no longer matters because... Well, he took I your Hail Mary, you yeah. know? I mean, he got a great result out of it, you know? You're going to die either way, that's how you got to look at it. You could have, you know, Take some gone too you. straight and got out of Jess's way, but you're still probably taking, taking the damage... One yep. hull. Yeah. So he survives that one, and now Je and now it's up to Jess to be a superhero to finish it. Range one, no target lock, but natural dice. Let's see what we get. Anything if he gets two hits, it's gone. Game, and that's it. Ryan that's is it. dead. Good match. And that's Ryan taking it. So.